Hartford Community Television. Hi, you're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Go Girl Scouts! Can women truly have it all? My guest this evening is Naomi Newworth. She's a practicing psychotherapist as well as an author. She has her MFA from Sarah Lawrence College. In addition, she is a community worker. She does volunteer work in the community. She is a wife and she's a mother of three children. And she has just written a new book that tackles this big question and we are going to discuss it this evening. Naomi, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. So you have a lot of things going on in your life, given the, whole, the list of, of um, your accomplishments. What has your journey been? Um, I think journeys are kind of like chapters in a book. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, I, many years ago in uh, 1978, I got my uh, master's in social work from Columbia. And um, I worked as a uh, psychotherapist. Um, and then I met my husband, and um, I went back actually for advanced training as a, to become a child and family therapist. And I did work down in, with, at the postgraduate center for um, four years or so. I went, got my training, and then I worked for them. And then uh, followed my husband to Milwaukee for a year, where he did his advanced training, and worked part-time in a residential treatment center. And then when we came here, I um, worked for um, Jewish Family Services. I worked as their uh, director of clinical services. And uh, I then had my second child and realized that I couldn't put that amount of time into work, working mm -hmm. full-time. Um, so, so up until then, you were working full-time with yes, your first child? Yes. yes. Okay. And then with my second one, um, then I went into private practice, which I could balance for myself. Mm -hmm. And I basically worked two or three days a week and um, tried to make my hours work around my children so that I was home at least half of the time. Mm -hmm. And I continued that uh, pattern till, re till recently. And um, about when my youngest was 10, who she's now 16, I decided I started to put together a portfolio of writing. Uh, without realizing it. I just decided there was a, a book I had to write, which was called Tilted Lives. Mm -hmm. And I went down to uh, Yale and took a course there. I took two courses, writing courses at Trinity. I took a writing course uh, with Bill Stull at University of Hartford. And I also took one at Southern Connecticut College. And then I realized I had a portfolio. And I realized that there was a skill to writing. There wasn't a skill to the, what you write about, but there was a skill to writing, a craft. Mm -hmm. And I just had to know what that craft was. So, um, I And in the meantime, you're still practicing? Yeah, I'm still you're practicing, still practicing pra part time. Okay. Um, at that time, I bring my mother up to Connecticut, who retires as a uh, professor from uh, Hofstra University. Mm -hmm. She's a writing professor. Ah, oh, that's for the writing, <laughs> the writing gene. Part of it. Part of it. Part of it. Part of it was also from my dad, okay. who was in advertising, and could string together words very easily. Yeah, <laughs> I think for an, to be successful in advertising, you'd have right. to have that skill. Yeah. Exactly. And then at that point, I went back to school. Uh, I leave at about seven in the morning, come home at eight. Um, wow. My family had to learn to fend for itself and uh, my husband had to take charge. Was that a tough tra transition? Uh, I think it was. You know, I think it was for me also. I think it's hard as a, a mother, you know, not to feel some guilt. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that probably um, all working mothers have to deal with. Yeah. You know, one point or another. And I w did that for four years, one day a week. And um, I was very fortunate enough 
in my second year to have a professor who uh, believed in me. Mm -hmm. And he went on to help me continue to write my, uh, to critique my book. And when I graduated, I was still working part-time. And then when my youngest uh, decided to board at school, uh, I started to look for more work and to not just work for myself, but to work with a bigger group. Okay. Because writing is a very alone yes, activity. Yes, I would think it would be right. lonely. Do you write at home? Yes, I have an office in my okay. home. Okay. I would think that would be hard, too. I would think it would be very easy to get distracted by the home stuff. Right. Like your other job of right. maintaining right. the house right. and your family. And right. Your, yeah. right. Did A lot of discipline and shutting the door and right. pretending you're somewhere else. Exactly. And basically, I would write when the, the children were at school, and I, you know, didn't do any of the other things I had to do till I would had work for three or four hours every day. So you treated it as a job. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And in this, at the same time, you were still practicing part time in your medical your yeah. psychotherapy. Right. Okay. Right. So having gone through all of that, and now you have two books that are published. Right. You still have your practice. Yes. Um, what is your answer to the question if? Can women, can women do it all? You've, you've done a lot of different things, different things all at the same time <laughs> in stages. Right. So what is your experience? What does your experience tell you if, if women can do all of, do it all? Well, again, I think that you can do um, different things at different times in your life. Mm -hmm. And I think that you have to prioritize what's the most important thing to you. Um, for me, it was always my family and my children and my husband. Mm -hmm. And I felt it was important to be there for them as much as I could as being there for myself. Mm -hmm. So I was able to, able to work part time and I was able to be there for my children right. and, uh, you know, uh, and for my husband. And, uh, but it's a balancing act, you know, and I think that you're constantly trying to figure out how am I going to make this work? And part of it is, you know, um, as my children got older, I had my older daughter picking up my younger one. And um, my, my middle one would be picking up the uh, subs for dinner when I wasn't there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, again, I would close my door when I was writing. Uh -huh. And, I, you know, I went to work. I'm now working for uh, Beacon Behavioral Services, which is a uh, large private practice in Avon. Okay. And uh, I work three days a week. And I'm still home because uh, I have an elderly mother who I brought up here when she was 86. She's now 92. And she's at the Macaulay. Uh -huh. So I, you know, I call her every day and I try to do for her something once a week. Right. So you, so, so you say not all at once. Right. So you, you kind different, of have to take it, it right. at the chapter stage by of life, chapter. Chapter by chapter. Right. I like the chapter analogy because I think it's very easy to think, gosh, time is flying right. and I haven't done all these things I thought I would do. Right. While at the same time you are caring for your family and raising children, maybe caring for older parents, right. um, you know, spouse, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, but there's always time, I think, to open the next chapter of, of the book. And right. As your children get to different stages exactly. in life. Um, did your children have a hard transition to you ramping up a little bit more on the writing and? Um, I think they did in the sense that I was they, I was in my home, so that you know the door would be closed, and they knew that they couldn't interfere with what mm -hmm. I was doing. Was there some training involved in that? <laughs> I think there was. I mean, I yeah. think it had to do with my commitment to it, and then verbalizing right. that to them, mm -hmm. and you know, making sure that they did what needed to be done if I was busy. Right. You know, whether it was answering the phone or feeding the dog. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also the other part of it is, is I think my children began to appreciate uh, not only me as a writer, but they began to write better themselves. Mm -hmm. It became more important to them. So the uh, model that you were, the role model you were being for right, them right, wore off for right, your children. Right. It's funny, my girls, I have a um, seven-year-old today and a nine-year-old, and I I do think they, what you do and what your passion is rubs off on them. We were right. writing our holiday letter and um, the things that my girls do are things that I, I love. And, and they love them. I don't force it on them, but I think they just have naturally 
gained an affinity for it because those are the things, you know, I love music, I love in playing an instrument, mm -hmm. singing, all of those mm -hmm. things. Um, and they love them too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, it, you know, so the writing rubs off as right. well. Yeah. And your, your parents were writers, you said. Right, so. right. Well, yeah. I think it makes sense. You know, I yeah. think it makes sense in terms of what they appreciate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I mean, I, I was reading, you know, books to my, all my children when they were very little. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, have th I had thousands of books in my house, you know. Yes. And it's still the same thing. Uh, my children say, you know, I, I want money for a book or I even want money for a magazine or whatever it is. Right. I say, go right ahead. Right. Because it really doesn't matter whether it's a book or it's a well a well written book or whether it's a magazine they like, but it really has to do with just reading. Yeah. And, and the more you read, uh, the, be the better it is in terms of writing. I mean, when I was in graduate school, we were reading almost a book a week. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I have heard that that to be a good writer, you need to really be a reader as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where it's part of where it starts. Yeah. It has to be something that's really appreciated in the home. Right. Now, the other relationship that I would imagine, um, you talk about this, and it's funny because my, the, the women that I'm friends with, we just recently had a book group, but, and it was a book with lots of different excerpts about women struggling with this issue of, of work-life balance. And most of them, when they had their children, sort of the marriage was not that they ignored it, but it was just sort of taken for granted, I think. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you bring up is being a good wife and, and really focusing on making sure you maintain that relationship, mm -hmm. not just taking care of the kids and your job mm -hmm. and all those other mm -hmm. things. So what is your trick to, to doing that? I mean, Well, again, I think that, you know, uh, you know I, I, will, I will be married 30 years this mm -hmm. year, and I think that we, al I always, we always make time for ourselves. I mean, we got a babysitter almost every Saturday night. And, you know, we went out either by ourselves with other couples, uh, we have, uh, or we went to the good speed, or we went down mm -hmm. to the Bushnell. But it's important. You know, it's yeah. important to take time off. And I think the other thing now that I'm doing, uh, you know, is you, you have to make some time for some kind of recreation that you like. You know, I happen to be a swimmer. So I'm trying to swim, you know, at least three times a week. Right. Um, but now it's a little easier because, um, you know, the, with the children not at home, they're a little bit old, you know, right. older, so right. you have a little more time. Right. So I think it's really uh, you're making time for you and your spouse mm -hmm. and uh, going on a date. And I think it's also making time for yourself, you know, some period of time where you can really take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we always took <clears throat> a vacation <clears throat> together at least once a year. You and your husband. We always take the kids away once a year, too. Right. So, so you do both. Yeah. My husband and I have dreams of doing that. We have, we've done long weekends. We have had a few. We're very fortunate. We have two, two, both of our parents, very healthy and are very loving grandparents. So they're very happy to come mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and watch the kids, so, right. which is nice because it is important because to have a full day, let alone a week together, is, it's pretty great to reconnect. And, um, now, and your husband was very supportive of your working activities and the things that you wanted to do. Well, again, I think that he became more supportive as it became clear that's what I w was going to do. So you had to s sort of rearrange things and yes. rethink things. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think being an artist is, um, you know, being a creative endeavor, mm -hmm. it's one where you really don't know what the outcome's going to be. It's just something you have to do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same with music. If you want to be a musician, you know, yeah. you play because you love to play and you don't know where you're going with it. Right. Uh, and I think that, you know, that's a different orientation um, in terms of mo most people um, understanding that, you know. Um, I think that, you know, my husband's a physician and it took, a, you know, it took a while for him to, you know, understand this is something that was important to me and that I had to do. And then when he realized it, you know, he was on board yeah. and helped, up, helped out as much as he could. So what, for people struggling with this, what would you say are... I don't the two or three real critical keys to being successful in managing all of these balls that you have up in the air. I think you have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. What are your priorities? And uh, what are the things that you have to do? What are the things you can let go of? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important also in terms of your support system. You know, getting people who are either your friends, your spouses, or your family, see if, in what ways they can help you out. 
and I think that um, it's making time for yourself, mm -hmm. not just uh, work time, but time for some kind of R&R, right. you know. Um, and those are the three main things I would say are really important. Yeah, and knowing what it is, wanting what it is you're going to do strongly enough. Exactly. To make that work. Exactly. So, yeah, to have it be worth, right. worth the rearranging. Right, and, right. Because yeah. like, I'm sure it can be very stressful. I mean, it, it, this morning we had, we're taping in December, so to, it, this show will air in January, but we had lots of snow this weekend. Right. And we're taping in the morning and school was delayed. Right. And I, I thought, I don't have time for school to be delayed. Right. I can't, this is ruining my schedule. Right. And I'm sure for every working parent, right. that's the exact first thought they have is, I, you know, you're kidding. <laughs> right. So you, but it's worth, you know, if what you're doing you love and it's worth it and it's something that you need to do, you make it work. And right. And it seems like employers are getting a little bit more flexible with, you know, understanding that people right. have children to take care of and as long as the job gets done. Right. Um, then that's okay. Right. I mean, you can't help the snow. No, you, you cannot. can't help it. It comes. Right. <laughs> so. You became an author. That was kind of your second chapter in your your work life. Right. Um, and you have recently published your second book, Rising to Grace. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the where this idea came from? And sure. Okay. Um, about 20 years ago, I read a newspaper article um, about a uh, about a husband and a wife. And the, the husband um, went on, he, he built, the, uh, built the, some kind of huge house in a, in a community in a different part of Connecticut. And he, he got himself into a lot of trouble, doing a lot of things he shouldn't be doing. Um, and his, uh, actually his wife stood by him. Hmm. And really, she went through a lot. Um, he, and at that point, I thought to myself, how does that work? <laughs> you know, how do you have somebody who betrays you on every level right. and still stay with him? You stay with them. So I thought, thought about that, and that's where Riva comes from, my main character in the book. Um, she's a uh, young Jewish mother, because again, uh, one of the things they tell you is to write what you know. Mm -hmm. And ha coming from a Jewish background, I have a sense of a Jewish identity, mm -hmm. which is important to me. Yes. Um, and I have, you know, Reva starting out at the beginning of the book, she has two young children, and uh, her husband David is a very successful um, dermatologist, and the more successful he becomes, you know, he wants all the uh, external things that show that, whether it's the fancy cars, the big house, uh, the pool in the backyard, and she's not satisfied with that. She wants something more for herself, and eventually she goes back to nursing part-time. And the two of them struggle about this, because that's not what he wants for himself. And this is set in uh, close to 1986, which they actually, which is very similar to what's going on now, they had a crash in the market. It was Black Friday, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Which really affected him greatly in terms of mm -hmm. his finances. Um, so it's really uh, very, can be very current to now, even though it's mm -hmm. set in another time. A lot of the same issue, a lot of consumerism, a lot of big houses that people think they can afford right. and then all of a sudden the rug pulls out from underneath exactly. you and you can't. Exactly. And then how that affects the relationship. Exactly. And how it also affects you individually. I mean, in this case, Riva did have a career mm -hmm. um, to fall back on. Right. She was a, she's a nurse. Yes. Yeah. A, a delivery room nurse. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things about uh, whether it's nursing or psychiatric social work is you can work part-time. You know, some of the other professions you can't. I think that's, it, it's interesting because I wonder when I think about counseling my girls on this issue, um, my background is, um, I was in banking, thank goodness I'm not in banking anymore, but I went back to school, I got my MBA and I had a consulting career and a consulting career with a husband who has an MBA and a, you know, he's traveling a lot, it just, it is not conducive to having a family, let alone raising the children once you have them. Correct. And um, I have thought many times, knowing what I know now, 
what my, my choices would be different. And you hate to pick your career based on the flexibility of it, but it's reality, I think. I mean, if, if you want to try and balance your work and you're, tr and you're planning on having a family, right. there are careers that are more flexible. Right. Or stay, I have friends who were, are still consultants but have been with the company long enough that they have leeway right. to cut back right. when the kids are young and go back right. and put more hours in right. later. And I think that's a smart thing too. Yes, definitely. Um, so there's a lot of learning there. <laughs> no, I think, it's, it, I think the uh, companies are learning. I think mm -hmm. young women are learning. Mm -hmm. um, and they're gonna, unfortunately going to have to make some difficult choices. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my oldest daughter is in law school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that, you know, in the, in the beginning, first years, she's going to be working very hard. Yes. And then I think because of my role modeling, she's hoping at some point, you know, maybe she'll work three quarters instead. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see. Yeah. Well, and I do, I think, um, again, going back to not all at the same time and in chapters of your life, I do think that there are ways to re recraft things as you go along when you see what works for you and for your family. and. Um, Something I thought that was interesting about the book um, was that the husband, David, um, is not supportive of her going back to work, right. which is not, it doesn't seem like the life that you had. It seems like your husband, I know you said it took him a little while to readjust, right. but was very supportive. He knew that that's what you wanted to do right. and was very supportive of right. that. So I'm curious why you went that direction. Well, again, I think David is a very different kind of man. Mm -hmm. I think David is uh, much more, he's, a very, he's very narcissistic. Mm -hmm. He's very self-absorbed. His career is everything to him. He is his career. Mm -hmm. He identifies himself with his, right. Job, yeah, right. his profession. Right. And I think that comes first, and everything mm -hmm. else came second. And he was also insecure. And mm -hmm. so he had to have all these, uh, you, know, you know, he had to have the big house. He had to have the the sports cars in order to f feel good about himself mm. and you know he needed that outward um, need to prove to the world correct that he's, here that he, I am I'm successful exactly mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been enough for him just to have uh, live on a smaller scale right and I think that you know um, if working men feel secure mm -hmm. they're able to help their wives you know do what they'd like to do too Mm -hmm. And I think also in this economy, it's very different. I think that, that you know, the, the two parents working full time is going to soon be the norm. Right. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's great to have choices, but not everybody has a right. choice whether to right. work or not work right. or work part time right. or not at all right. or full time. It's right. a necessity. And exactly. I have um, friends who, you know, the husband works at night. And the wife works during the day, and exactly. they, and that way their children aren't in childcare. Right. Um, but again, you need to make sure you find time for each other right. when you're on a schedule like right. that. I think that's harder, and I think that you know it takes a lot more work. Mm -hmm. um, and you, it ha you have to kind of wait till the children are a little older some of the time. Right. Um, you know, in in, in Reva's case, uh, in Rising to Grace, she was lucky enough she had uh, a housekeeper in her house. Yes, lovely woman. She was sweet. I liked her. She yeah. was a great character. Yeah. But she was really a surrogate uh, mother to Reva and to the mm -hmm. children. And, you know, you can do the same thing with childcare in terms of who you pick right. and in terms of where you bring your children. You know, uh, if you feel your children are being well taken care of, I think mm -hmm. that you can uh, move on. And I think that's really important in terms of, you know, picking good childcare and people who really care about your, your, your kids. Right. And, I, you know, and I do see, I... Um, Families where the grandparents do a little bit of the child care, Absolutely. either part of it or all of it, or and that's lovely because mm -hmm. not only do you have your children with someone you really trust, but what a great relationship you would have with your grandparents if you spent that much time with them. No, right? absolutely. Which is very nice right. if that's possible. I, right. You know, my parents are, and my husband's parents are not close enough, but I think that's a great right. situation to be in too. Right. And the grand and the parent grandparents seem really happy about it. Right. Um, I think that's really true. I mean, it's something I laugh and tell my oldest daughter, you know, if you have to work full time, come back to, you know, West Hartford so we could be of some help. Right. Which um, isn't great. <laughs> it's great that you want to do that yeah. for her. Yeah. And then you can be with the grandchildren right. and you really right. know each other. It's not just a right. once a year, exactly. you know, twice a year visit. Yeah. I was very lucky with my mother. I mean, my mother lived uh, 
uh, on Long Island, and when the children were little, she would take the train up and at least once a month. Oh, that's nice. So she really uh, yeah. ha now has relationships with all three of them. Mm -hmm. Well, and my parents and my husband's parents see our children a lot more. I mean, flying is much more common than it used to right. be. I mean, it's right. not, although it's getting more expensive, but it didn't right. used to be so right. expensive. Right. And I think, yeah, it, it works out a little bit better. Right. That you see. I used to see my grandparents, I think, once, once a year. They would come for a couple weeks, but mm -hmm. that was it. Right. And then, you know, they would go. Right. So, um, so you took, the, to, to write this, you, this was when you, started the kind of treating it as a job to write these two books. Right. Yeah. And are you working on anything now? Or are you well, again, um, coming up with any? I, I'm, working on, I'm working on some short stories. Mm -hmm. um, I think that by nature I, I, I'm, a, I'm a better short story writer than mm -hmm. a, a, a book of one character because I find that um, short stories are more intense mm -hmm. and you really have to be totally in the character's head all the time from the minute they get on the page. Um, and what I do, is, since my stories are character driven, I really follow my characters around. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure where they're going or, or until I, they put them on the page and right. see where they're taking me. Right. And some of the time though I'm influenced by uh, you know, mm -hmm. what's going on in the news. You know, like now I'm, I'm working on a story that has to do with a young girl whose mother's a fortune teller. Mm. And how's that going to affect her? Right. That's interesting. Fortune teller. And you had said you people are going more to fortune tellers yes. now. Yes. They're that, looking for some guidance exactly. in this crazy economy. Right. Maybe the fortune tellers could tell me what to do. You know, basically the bankers blew it. <laughs> well, basically, also, you know, I believe in psychotherapy, and I think right. you know, if you have a good psychotherapist, they can help you through the stress of this. Right. You know, I think that um, there are very stressful pe pe periods of time in everybody's life, mm -hmm. and you know. I would recommend them seeing someone and talking about it. Yeah. I think, you know, some someone not in the situation. Exactly. Completely removed. Exactly. Yeah. And part of that is is, you know, again, there's so many different changes, whether it's, you know, moving to town after you have children. I I've worked with quite a few women who have postpartum depression after their children are born. And then um, the stage of life that I'm dealing with now, which is very interesting to me as I've gotten older, is uh, you know, people who have uh, retired. And now what are they going to do? That's a whole nother show. I think that's, it's hard. Yes. You know? That's a huge transition yes. for people. Yes. To, you know, uh, yeah, we should talk about that in <laughs> another show because I think that's, a lot of people struggle with that. Right. I've seen, you know, I've seen that. Right. Um, you have a big career and then you want to retire, you want right. to do the things that you love and right. then it, somehow it's, how do you make that happen? How do you make, do you you make that transition? Right. I'm also dealing with a lot of people who uh, spouses have passed away. Oh. So they're not only dealing with not working anymore, but they thought they would be retiring with a spouse. Right. Which makes it even more difficult. Right. This has been great. And so we Thank can talk you. about so much more. <laughs> You've just opened a can of worms. I want to talk about that retirement thing. Um, so maybe you can't have it all, but you can have it all over time. Correct. And just figure out how it, how it works and, right. and, and get try some people who are on board with supporting right. you. And, and be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't try and rush things. Right. Yes. Right. It's great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. This has been, I read your book. It was great. Very good read. Um, and if you want more information about Naomi Newworth and her, um, her books and practice, um, her website will be shown on the screen. Naomi, it's Naomi Newworth dot Com. Com. Naomi Newworth.com. Um, you've been watching Life in Style with Sarah. I hope you've enjoyed the show this evening. You've gotten some insights on how to make it work with your family and your, and your working career. Until next month, thanks and good night.